Hey everybody, welcome back to Play Casket with your host, Parak the Goblin, and Ghost, your co-host. And this week we're going to go ahead and talk about like mechanics in games that even today, old, and even in genres that are like inherent, that need some work. More, uh, sorry, more assembly necessary. Basically. So, for the most part, for a synopsis, this basically, we're going to talk about games that, are, that have been kind of announced, we kind of confirmed that they're in, in that are in... Uh, in some kind of level development and then of course we're going to talk about like genres that have a lot of problems like that just need to be fixed and updated and then maybe like perhaps some imaginary sequels at the end like what could have happened what we would like to see if they ever got a sequel okay um i'll go ahead and let you go ahead and go first okay well um one i would say is xenoblade or if, if they ever come out with xenoblade 3 that's so, working on, or I, I feel like I feel like Xenoblade Three mm-hmm. is kind of a given. Yeah, like it's one of those like it, it's gonna make sense. Mm-hmm. So I I'm not sure that this next um, Xenoblade game or this next Monolith Soft game is Xenoblade of any kind. I'm no I don't know. I don't. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but there's a chance that, that there's a lot of people suggesting that it's probably Xenoblade Three. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Nintendo's like. This game's doing well. It's growing very well, and we're gonna go ahead and hop on that opportunity. Yeah, but uh, so well, we'll see too, because uh, they might do Rex's universe. Uh, people are rumoring that it's uh, part three, basically, or like yeah, it'll it'll continue the Rex's universe. I don't know. I think I think they kind of wrapped it up supposedly pretty well. That they they basically kind of left it open of what's a possibility for a third dimension that's involved in it and stuff mm-hmm. or that's probably going to be like several several thousand years later so they can just kind of start it from scratch again no okay i think that's what's probably going to happen like it's going to be a different universe but it's like as far as the time goes it's like ahead of everything else mm-hmm. so it's not it's not overlapping with uh shulk or rex's universes yeah i was thinking about that too if they're going to I feel do. like that's I feel like that's the way they're gonna do it. So they could kind of like kind of start with a with a new story, basically. Yeah. But mechanically, they they've played for the most part the same. Yeah. Roughly. But one thing I would like to see them do is uh, change the side quests. At least give them more impact. If they could fix like the the, the problem with the current the current side quests that they give us is just uh, go fetch some stuff and come back or. Uh, Go kill something and come back. Like, eh, it's not that fun. No, well, like they're 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 those are very straightforward ones. Like, yeah. I kind of get them at the same time. Like, kind of gives you a purpose to kind of hunt those th- particular ones down. Um, I do think, I mean, because I agree with you, I do think the side quests of two mm-hmm. uh, took a step back from one. Like, even though one had some pretty m- uh, mundane and pedestrian side quest you still kind of like unlock that character's portrait of some kind and had like this connection tree between uh how are they connected to everyone else in that uh that township and stuff like that so there's at least that yeah but there's no permanency there's no there's no growth met with that like i've i, I was like spamming a bunch of them myself in xenoblade 2 and they just they just won't they just didn't serve anything and then once yeah. You like once you out level that area, like it's not even you. It's not even useful to kind of like return to. Like mm-hmm. whereas there's some there's uh like in some MMOs, I'm sure Final Fantasy fourteen did this, but a lot of older expansions of WoW used to do this as well. Was you can still go back to some previous content and farm out some of the uh, currency of that time and still get rewards in case you missed it. You know what I mean? No. And you can still use that to get like some better stuff for your like alts or something that you're trying to level mm-hmm. so there was there's still a reason for it but for xenoblade since it is a single player stuff there's just just listen there's no yeah, reason it, it just pads out the time yeah really. it, it really does and it doesn't do it very it doesn't really do a good job but one thing i would like them to do is like if you do take a side quest go kill something give us something unique or like give us like a uh, encyclopedia to to fill out so you, you know you know that would quest- actually i think that would be cool like make make the side quests fill out the beast uh the uh beastiary. Beastiary. yeah like that's how you fill it out not just beat the monsters like literally go out there 
uh, during a quest, and it's like, yeah, you're gonna have to record this. Mm-hmm. That would be that would actually be cool. Yeah. Or like certain certain side quests from certain people do certain rewards like that. Like one guy's probably gonna be cataloging the animals, so you're gonna report what you've seen, and you get the bestiary. Yeah. Then. There's a sculptor out there that wants certain pieces from that monster so they could sculpt a figure that you can, like, decorate a hideout with or something like that. Yeah. Like, so there's, there's like, a, um, I wouldn't say a meta game, but basically, like, a game within a game that you, you get rewards to kind of better appreciate the universe yeah. that you're playing in. Like, I think that would be cool. Because I just think it's kind of funny how, uh, you know, y- you save the universe from... Mm-hmm. from grave danger and I go kill 20 chickens for me <laughs> thank you for being the hero saving our town but can you kill this frog <laughs> I guess <laughs> but, uh, yeah no I but I agree with you on that yeah. um, but that wasn't really the one I, I, I first came to mind mine was actually ukulele too um, yeah. <laughs> so other than the people who bought the game blindly, I was one of the people who was expecting the janky 64 feel. Yeah. So the way the game felt, felt good. Except for, you know, some of the things that were kind of like willy-nilly just kind of tossed anywhere. Like at least with Banjo-Kazooie, there was like some kind of guide with those notes when you were collecting it and stuff, right? So other than that, like it, it, I, it met my expectations with that. Mm-hmm. One of the mechanics that was a major problem for me was basically their checkpoints. Their checkpoints was only if you entered any type of building or left a building. Yeah. Now, if there was only one building that was like all the way on the other side of the last few pages that you have to get, which is this game's version of the Jiggies and Stars and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. um, and you have to climb an entire mountain and then you die... You start all the way back there. Jesus Christ! So, so they still have, so even in the old back in Banjo Kazooie, it did that to you? Uh, no. no, no, it did not. No, because <laughs> because it wasn't as big. The Banjo Kazooie wasn't even that big. Like when you died and you had to go to certain things, because they did do a very similar thing. But the thing was, the um, the universe they had was still tighter and compact. So mm-hmm. even if, like in Gobi Desert, there's maybe a couple entryways, and you ent- exit and you start at the beginning, and you have to go on the other side. It's not even that much of a uh, jaunt to get there. Mm-hmm. But with ukulele, ukulele, like, several of their worlds are, like, three times larger than any of <laughs> Banjo Kazooie's. They are huge. Oh, it's great. It's great for, the mo- for, for like, exploration and stuff. I, I actually like the fact that they're actually that huge. Yeah. But there was no checkpoints. There was no anything to kind of help you. Like, if you want to explore that mountain more mm-hmm. and then you accidentally just fell off the wrong side, mm-hmm. you were SOL. You got to go back to the beginning. Yeah. Or unless well, you didn't wa- even Does even Mario have uh, mid- midway points that you could spawn in? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Se- several uh, of the um, Stars. games have, like, little flags and stuff like that that where you start off on and, and stuff, too. Yeah. Even the current ones. Like, even in Mario Odyssey, mm-hmm. if you died and you started somewhere you didn't want to be, you can still teleport to any of the other checkpoints you have touched. Oh, okay. And it just you just get there. Which is actually the other point that I wanted to talk about, um, is actually travel. Like, reward travel in ukulele. Like, mm-hmm. give, give the ability for the, like, instead of just doing the roll thing, which basically the lizard just kind of rolls up into a ball and you just kind of run a little faster yeah it's kind of like using the launch run yeah (laughs) so instead of just doing that everywhere because it's still a huge place like give them the ability like if you get to a certain place like make that place like have some kind of helicopter or something like that that you could then fly around and each one of these points have a little mini game or something like like that the, uh, the cannon from mario 64 yeah (laughs) <laughs> yeah, kind of like that, but like, let's say for instance, no, you you unlock it by the time you get to that point, mm-hmm. right? Which is kind of like the Canon 64. But like, each one of them have their own little like flight path mini game too that you mm-hmm. can unlock and get more more rewards and stuff. I think would be great. But you can fly that helicopter over to any of the other points, yeah. which would make which would reward it. But it would be able to like, if I end up on the other side of the plane and I need to get somewhere else. I could take that and just zip, zip, zip on over there, straight line. And I think it would be great for them to have. Just give that, checkpoints, teleportation points. 
Yeah, you could do you, you could do that too. But I think doing one of those will help, like, kind of give them a sense of uh, um, universal appeal with mm-hmm. them and stuff. I, that's the reason why I mixed with the reward and stuff. I think it would be a good idea. Yeah. Like for for what it is right now, there's it's too punishing to die. Mm-hmm. That like even if you just make a small misstep. Like, there's a difference between dying and then have to start at the bottom of the mountain, then starting all the way back at the beginning. It, like, you can get frustrated, especially if it's like an ice level and stuff. You get so frustrated that you just don't want to do it again. Yeah. Like, nope, nope, we ain't, no, 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 and just leave. Yeah. Right? So, that's what I would say. But uh, we both have an agreement of the third one that we were going to talk about, <laughs> which, we like, I'm going to say right now. There is so much here that we're probably going to be touching it on a whole nother um, topic as well and just really break it down. But there's a couple things that uh, I think we both agreed that we should at least touch base on here because it yeah there's there's some things overlap, but to, we could break it down. Things here. that we need to fix up on Pokemon in general, or at least what we would like to see Pokemon in, Gen in general and what we would like to see going forward. Yeah. yeah, like Pokemon does have a lot of flaws. One thing is. Um, I was really disappointed when you couldn't really interact with all the gym leaders in uh, Sword and Shield because they hyped up the they hyped up the gym leaders. They were gonna be they were really dynamic when you met them because they all had their own personalities. It wasn't just like in the previous iterations where I am this character and then they just leave. They actually got with you. You talked with them, and you actually had like little uh, what is it? quests with them i guess they would Mm -hmm. come in they would interject and they would go Mm -hmm. but that was it like the post game and stuff yeah um they actually they actually interact with you because the hall of fame is different now in sword Mm -hmm. and shield so there's interaction with them since you are now the champion that they'll keep challenging you if you go to the tournament so there's still that yeah right but um and i think i think it was fire red I could be wrong, mm-hmm. but they fire red and leaf green. Um, they gave you a little call thing that some of the gym leaders would call you for a rematch. Oh, okay. Um, and it, it happened rarely compared to the other trainers you'd run into that change your the numbers with you and stuff. But um, I do think those mechanics would actually be good trying to develop on mm-hmm. for something to this point. Yeah. Because that way you're not like. Post game, eventually you're just shiny hunting. You're not you're not gonna be shiny hunting, and then Brock comes up and going, "What you doing, buddy?" Yeah, you know, like they're not gonna do it. Well, I still want to. Uh, I still want to see something uh, where you team up with the gym leaders and you become a gym gym leader. That'd be really, really cool. Well, what would you be doing post game in the gym as a gym leader if you're gonna be chilling out in a gym all the time? You no, know what I mean, have, have people have was it? Maybe you could be like a a boss, and people would come into your gym, and then they would fight your your team set up right it'd be pretty cool yeah but how, how are you supposed to know that like that that's that's the i think that's the reason why they haven't ran into it i think i think that they well, have something they could work on but yeah yeah, yeah something <laughs> to that point because you you already basically walk around as a champion in sword and shield so they're kind of like skirting that type of idea mm-hmm. and then of course two of the people who are your pseudo rivals yeah. became gym leaders in that story mm-hmm. you have marnie and then you have uh, B-Day, or Bede, whatever you pronounce his stupid yeah. name. <laughs> they both became gym leaders by the end. Oh, okay. Okay? So, they obviously are skirting that. They're, they're, they're skirting around that idea. Mm-hmm. Like, they're, they're dabbling. So, I do think that they, they will eventually get to that point, but how, like, how are they going to be able to execute it well with, where it makes it feel like you're a gym leader, not just a kid that's being forced to go back there and fight some other br- brat? later you know what i mean i mean they could change the the trials so like instead of just going around fighting gym leaders you're going around fighting champions around the world and then you're becoming an official gym something like that like it doesn't always have to be the same formula of oh i'm not talking about i'm not talking about the standard like but you gotta think like all these like all the stories all of them all gen 8 stories have started with you the character Mm -hmm. As like a 13 to 15 year old kid. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you end up eventually bonding with your characters, defeat the champion, beca- uh, defeated the hall of- and get- go to the Hall of Fame, and basically beat the game. That's the end goal, basically. Yeah. Even in Sun and Moon when they got rid of gyms, right? Um, 
now when we're playing, we're, when we're talking about a theoretical uh, new gym leader, since they already shown that young young other rivals have got became gym leaders, um, when you're talking about that, right? Um, basically, it's how are you like? Let's say you run a gym now, like how are they going to be able to make that feel like you're defending your gym while you're still, let's say, theoretically shiny hunting? Like yeah. I'm, I want to, I want to log in, and because I'm really wanting a shiny Caterpie, mm-hmm. you know, like what's going to happen if you're in the midst of doing a shiny Caterpie, and then like somebody rings you up and like, hey, there's some other snot-nosed brat that wants to go ahead and knock your crap around. Yeah, you know, like how is that supposed to make it feel like a gym instead of more of a chore? Yeah, like that's, I think that's the problem. I, I think you'll have to change up the formula. So yeah, like I think, I think the problem is is how to make that feel different from what everything you're already doing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like they'll probably they'll, they'll they could if they're making something like that, um, they would probably do something that doesn't have gyms per mm-hmm. se. So you can't be a leader of something because you're you you've had to go through those same trials. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I thought about that too. So, so that, yeah. that's like for instance, like the champion stuff in Sword and Shield. You're you you just have to start another tournament and then all the gym leaders will challenge you again yeah because you got to defend the title mm-hmm. it makes sense but that's whenever you feel like it otherwise you can go ahead and shiny hunt for the next 300 years <laughs> so like i feel like that's a pro that's that's like that's a wish list thing like because the, the, yeah i do know they have to explore more what they can do with the universe because jay wet's made a really interesting point that Pokemon is more than just uh, battling and collecting because there's, you know, beauty contest, shiny hunting, breeding, mm-hmm. um, racing. I do think they should, yeah. inv- I, I do think they should uh, kind of build on the uh, beauty contest again. I yeah. think, I think it was a refreshing take. And if they do it once a week, like, like just have a system where it's once a week, mm-hmm. it gives you enough of a reason to log in next week for 20 minutes. If you're just like over Pokemon, yeah. you know? Um, similar to how, like, Animal Crossing worked. But, uh, my problem with Gen 9 Mm -hmm. was they keep forgetting that they made items to evolve things after they have already, like, used the same methods to make new items to evolve them (laughs) the same way. (laughs) Like, we have all the elemental stones. stones? Remember Moonstones? Because Game Freak didn't. Because it didn't, like, three Pokemon just use it and that was it. Uh, Moonstones, I think it's five. Three Pokemon used it in Gen 1, and I think one used it in Gen 2, and then another one used it in Gen 5. So no? Something yeah. like that? Wherever Delcaddy came in. And that was it. Mm-hmm. And now I'm not saying that they should just make more Pokemon um, evolve with the Moonstone when you just throw the rock at them, mm-hmm. but maybe use different methods. And I know this is another older method, trading, but what if you traded that Pokemon? Mm. Well, pardon me. Mm-hmm. Um, well, uh, it's holding a stone. Yeah. You know? Like, if it, if let's say, like, it, it could change its basically other typing. Mm-hmm. It evolves into the same Pokemon, but depending on all the element stones that they have, from Leaf Stone, Fire Stone, Sun Stone could actually be Fairy, you know, various forms. Or Moon Stone could be Fairy. Whatever, right? Mm-hmm. They do that. And it turns into that typing. Like, and it's the same Pokemon. Yeah. But all you have to do is trade it while it's holding it. I mean, Steel Coat boosts up metal oh, or steel type attacks while you're holding it. Mm-hmm. So other Pokemon who know metal uh, steel type attacks, they they know they, they, can, they, they still benefit from that item. But Onyx and Scyther evolve from trading while it's holding it. I don't know. There's Just no... Look. Just let me be lazy. I just want to power through it. <laughs> well, the issue too is uh, winning note. Uh, is it, when is a good time to evolve it? Like, because because if, cause if you just give it an item, and like, well, I just want to write you right away. So here's a stone at level one. So, um, it's because of certain types of uh, learning moves Pikachu mm-hmm. learns, mm-hmm. and actually, Raichu doesn't increase in uh, speed as much. Mm-hmm. as fast but they has the more special attack i'm not sure how it works now as far as the growth for uh sword and shield yeah but because of that it, it it's it's better depending on the type of pokemon that they have but most uh most of the high-end pokemon that mm-hmm. they use in tournaments 
are either legendaries or ones that didn't really evolve from stones anyway. Yeah. So it's been it's that, been it's the same with the uh, card game too. <laughs> it's 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 literally nothing like it hasn't been addressed because it hasn't been a problem. Yeah. But when it starts becoming a problem, like if Raichu becomes mega Raichu and stuff, um, then we have problems. Like that's that, mm -hmm. right? But we'll break deaths down in another episode, like a way deeper. This this thing, <laughs> this hole we, goes deep. Yeah, we could do like three or four episodes off of. Oh my on. god. Um, but let's go. Let's talk about like just generic series genres, mechanics. stuff like that that has mechanics that are very that are like ingrained to the very fabric of those things that RPG, you wish they could just uh, change. JRPGs. Oof. Yeah. Well, what. Uh, uh, navigation holy crap like can can i go to where i need to go because game getting lost like they just tell you oh yeah go go here you show and then you you don't know where to go from where they tell you well i've i've seen more do better than that now like a lot more have done a lot um yeah but they make it extremely extremely linear that's the issue no nah, no um there's there's actually Pokemon Sword and Shield did this and uh Dragon Quest just recently did this. Like when you start Dragon Quest after a let's say file will actually give you a recap of what has happened mm -hmm. to kinda of jog your memory of what you need to do next. And then it has a little uh um character that you can read the fortune and just basically tells you what you need to do next. Okay. So there's stuff like that that kinda of, like there's some RPGs that are building off of that and I do think a lot more need to do something to that point. Yeah, because sometimes like a lot of times, two people don't. You won't have time to come back to a game, or it'll be six months, and you're like, "Oh, I forgot about this," and you pick it up, and or maybe you're just tired of the RPG thing, and you just kind of mixed it up, or maybe you got a new game, and then you just binge the hell out of it. Yeah. Like I just got into, I just got back into Shield after I only played it for like three months when it first released, mm -hmm. and then I got back into it maybe November-ish, mm -hmm. and only in three weeks, like I've been binging just that. Okay. So yeah, there's always there's there's always a situation like that, but uh. I do think, I do think them navigation would probably help, mm -hmm. but I do see a lot more uh, developers taking those initiatives and doing something with it. It's just a matter of how many more people are going to. Yeah. But I'm going to say another thing I've noticed, and only a few po a few um, people have already done this, is make statuses kind of matter. Death magic, holy shit! <laughs> like. <laughs> Like well, I'm talking. I'm talking about like even your basic paralyze and stuff like that. Like paralyze has been probably the only truly useful thing I've seen in other RPGs and stuff, mm -hmm. not just Pokemon. But Pokemon's like poison doesn't really help much unless you're catching Pokemon. You yeah. know, otherwise they just you can probably deal with all the damage you take from that stuff. Yeah, it's just to make sure and, they and don't focus sash. But that's when you got uh, what is it? Like spiky terrain and like mm -hmm. damage terrain, yeah. It's like and like, well, that's just that's in just Pokemon, but mm -hmm. I'm talking about like in like all sorts of variety of RPGs, mm -hmm. like Dragon Quest. I can like whoever's whoever is damaged by uh, poison, um, oh, is like they can just take it if they have enough HP, they can just. Take it. Yeah, and just keep casting cure, and then. Oh well, yeah, just, just keep ignore. casting cure, or if they have a lot of HP, just ignore it until you get to a hotel. The Dark Souls problem. Right? You know, like it's just, it's just so, it's, it's, it's just bad. Like it's just, it doesn't make sense with it, mm -hmm. and nobody's utilizing it. I think the only one that has ever really made status effects really work recently mm -hmm. is Shin Megami Tensei Five. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't ever want to be frozen in front of them. Like. That stuff hurts. So, like, unless you're constantly healthy and, like, ready to kind of do some damage and throw down, you're going to get your shit kicked in. Yeah. So, but, yeah, no, I definitely agree with that. I just wish uh, statuses would work and function. Um, but let's, let's, let's go ahead and uh, wrap this up with imaginary sequels, things that we would wish to see, but if they did, there's something that needs to be fixed. Because we all have, we have ideas and games that we just love from back in the day. But if they ever made another one, you're like, man, I really do not wish to see this thing in that game again. <laughs> I would say with Kingsfield, either, 
I don't know if a modern king seal would really work because they could give us the the thumbsticks because the uh, most of them didn't really incorporate the uh, the analogs to look. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I know King Seal Two or is it King Seal the Ancient City? You, you can use the right thumbstick to look up and down now, but you can't look left and right. You still it's still uh, shoulder button to strafe and R two and L two is to look up and down. <laughs> so it's just basically. <laughs> Let me be able to control it like a normal human being. Yeah. Like, but at the same imagine time, like, being that character, too. <laughs> like, uh-oh, something scary to the right, and you just shimmy like a Goomba that way to see what's going on. Yeah. But at the same time, too, it's like, I don't know, maybe that jankiness is kind of like what make, gives it its charm. Or like, or part of it's because it's also nostalgia, and it's actually added that difficulty. Kind yeah. of like how um, reloading works in some games. Like, it's basically bullet management. Mm-hmm. And you got to understand, like, how vulnerable I am during this reload. And yeah. Stuff like that. So you got you to gotta compare that. Which is interesting, because I'm surprised most games do also uh, do uh, bullet dump. So, like, if you have five bullets left in the clip, if you reload, you lose those five bullets. And no, that would be, that'd, that'd be, that'd be a very good, interesting one, too, with some mechanics. But I think major, uh, major com- uh, games like Call of Duty won't ever do that, because they... Because they're already doing so much bad shit already. Let's yeah. go ahead and not top of the cherry off <laughs> real quick yet. We're still taking a dump in this bowl. <laughs> I mean, I guess if you're really good at man- managing your, your magazines, like, you shoot it all. Okay, I have one magazine that has three bullets left in it, so I know where this one's at, and you'll just reload into it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> It's just like, just just has this weird cue thing of just, like, regularly looking magazines, and this is one red one. Like, ah, how many bullets did I have in that? <laughs> like, yeah. how, how, mu- how willing am I, w- like, willing to look at that one again? Yeah. That would actually be an interesting mechanic, but I don't think that fixes anything. I think this just makes more problems right there. So, yeah, I'd like but, to see them address that. Yeah, no, that, that I actually think that that actually be an interesting mechanic. But uh, for me, um, Quest sixty four was a pretty good game, mm-hmm. at least for its time. It aged like absolute like milk. Mm-hmm. Um, but if they ever did like a remake or a sequel of some kind, I would definitely want them to be very clear and like understanding of how elements interact with one another. Mm-hmm. There's a couple element changes and mixes that you would do that made no sense Mm -hmm. like why would mist come out of air and earth we may never know (laughs) but i guess that happens dust devil well no it was like it it was basically a fog thing it was there wasn't anything else but like just a clear thing like that and uh i would say make the game less turn-based and more action like, you still had a space that you would have to go r- run around in, round in. Then you choose your selection, and then you basically attack the monsters. Now, while the monsters are attacking, you should be able to move around a bit to kind of at least withstand some blast or maybe, like, adjust yourself to, like, the next next battle, you know? Mm-hmm. I think that would be pretty cool. And that's really all I could think of for that, but I really don't really have many games that I'm like, oh... I'm going to get a sequel of it. It took me really hard to think about this one much. I'm like, what would fix this? Yeah. Like, if they did another Turok, all they have to do is not do another space age shooter and call (laughs) the planet Turok. Yeah. Don't do that again. (laughs) Ever. We should play it. Uh, uh, uh. Then we might start doing less plays, though. It's pretty soon. It's going to be fun. All right. But uh, I would like to thank you guys all. We're going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Um, thank you guys for listening for this uh, little extended uh, episode. And we, we will, will see, see you on, on the, the other, other side. side. Hey everyone, this is Paraka. And Ghost. I would like to say thank you for listening to our podcast. If you like our content, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe and share our video with your friends. You can also follow and support us on other social media such as Minds and Rumble. Links in the description below.